Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I have Ava Montgomery with me. She is the proud mom to her teenage son and certified life coach. For the past 15 years, she has mentored adolescents and adults in leadership, self-confidence, and performance through her thriving life coaching practice. She has a passion and a gift for helping people harness their strengths, discover their passions, and succeed with purpose-driven force to accomplish anything they set their minds to. And I'm very excited for everyone to meet Ava. And Ava, why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do and let everybody know all the beautiful things that you've accomplished because it's um, great, amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here um, with you and your audience. Um, we had a wonderful time the last time we did an interview together. And so thank yes. you for having me back. Um, so my passion obviously lies in really um, understanding how the mind works and the power of, of positive thinking and all of those things. I've been immersed in that for over 20 years um, and then decided to take it one step further and get my certification as a life coach uh, about 15 years back. Um, so it's something that I found or actually searched out for my own um, childhood trauma issues and um, really was curious to find out all these different things and 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 actually the power that that positive thinking and and the mind has over your physical circumstances and so um i spent many years putting that into practice and helping others put that into practice um and as you said in your introduction i am um, the mother of a 16 year old son i'm a single mom and um, that in and of itself has its own challenges, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> um, but I uh, realized that, you know, in raising him and in coming to this point, this poignant time in his development, that there really um, wasn't a lot out there that taught the basic fundamentals of just self regulation and self-understanding and and what to do in certain circumstances and how to actually reframe and train yourself to be a half glass you know a glass half full person right. you know it's learned optimism and learned um delegation of emotions rather than them controlling you understanding them processing them helping right. in a healthy manner and understand them but not create havoc and additional meaning and all of the things that really lead to the stuff that we're seeing with kids which is anxiety depression comparison issues where you know they don't feel like they're measuring up or um, lack of confidence, lack of self-worth, all of those things are tied into that. And so um, it was just really strong. I, you know, I, I know you're an author. It, it's, it's bizarre, but it, it was almost just, it was there and it, it was my calling to write right. it. Um, never written a book before. I mean, I've been told a million times, yo, you've got so many books in you. You're such a great writer. You da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's so nice. Yeah. And you know, and I love writing. I just never, you know, I mean, thinking about that and, and the romanticism of writing and then actually putting yourself out there and, you know, positioning yourself as an expert in in a field is a totally different thing so um yeah it was a learning and growing journey for me for sure um but I currently work with clients um and now I'm going to expand on this book and create which is limitless confidence for I don't know if you could see it limitless back it up a little so they could see it there yeah. you go yes. yeah limitless confidence for teens um and uh, hopefully turn that into an online program and we'll see what happens. Excellent. Yeah. 
you know, we are, we are in a society that is so different than what we grew up in. And in our society, when we grew up, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. And also the message on TV was different. You know, kids are getting, you know, the wrong messages, I feel. And sometimes, you know, when you're at as a teen, you get easily influenced. And sometimes when you don't have the right mentors out there, you can actually, you know, um, change your whole way of, of thinking through other, you know, individuals who empower the internet, you know, these millions yeah. of followers and stuff like that. And, you know, children, you know, feel like they need to be at that level, you know, and they need to be just like them. And, right. you know, and also the stresses of school and, you know, we didn't need a, um, we didn't, when we went to, you know, college was a big thing when we graduated and we right. didn't need a master's or a doctorate. Right. So these, there's a lot of pressure. So one, we have the pressure of the media. Two, we have the pressure of the demands of, you know, they, they need higher education. Jobs are limited. There's so much going on in our society. Now, one, you know, when kids are under stress, what do you, you know, what, how do you handle, you know, you know, when you see them stressed out, you see them depressed, you see them sad. What's the first thing you do to try to help them, you know, in right. the situation they're in? That's a great question. I mean, obviously, the the more that you can ask probing questions that are open ended, right? So mm -hmm. they're why questions or what or how are you feeling right now? What what are you what are you connecting that with? It's 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 asking questions that allow the child to really go inward and reflect and answer. And when you do that, okay, so for kids. First of all, their brains aren't fully developed, right? right. So they don't have the coping mechanism skills that we do or the ability to sort of filter filter everything out. Everything is important. Everything seems to be big and large to them at this stage. Yes. And as well as it is. I mean, they're transitioning and everything's happening biologically and we're expecting more of them. And like you said, I, I would like, I would rather phrase that as like the pressure of the media. You yeah. Know? No, they, 100%. Are, they are literally trying to shape it's propaganda. They're trying to shape their thoughts and what they should and shouldn't do. And here's the deal. We're not all one, one size fits all. And right. by the way, it's okay if you don't go to college, right? That doesn't mean look at Elon Musk, like look at, you can look at a thousand million people. It does, that is, there's not one path to success and it yes. doesn't always equal a four-year school. Exactly. Right? And I don't think that's being said enough to them. It's drilled all day, every day. Like what school are you going to go to? What's your GPA? What, what, what do you get? What'd you get on your SATs? It's like, mm, Hey, maybe I want to go to trade school. Hey, maybe I'm an artist. Hey, maybe I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm a writer. I'm, I want to be a nan. I don't know what that is, what that looks like, but that right. is awesome. And, and equally important, um, that everybody lives out their true self, their true life, their true purpose, right? That's all yeah. everybody. So um, I would ask, you know, those types of questions and then I would challenge them. So, you know, I feel depressed because let's say, you know, you're, you're speaking to your kid and, and you, you say, I feel depressed because um, I got into a fight with my friend at school today. Well, okay. Or I am depressed. Okay. Well, depressed is a state of being. It's not a feeling. Mm hmm Right. It's yes. so you need to first back out of that and, and show the difference, like, uh, like turn that light bulb on for them by, mm -hmm. by guiding them to that conclusion where they see that that's true. Right. So then once you can take that out, okay, you take that crazy hairy monster out of the equation and everything that comes with it. And I feel like, you know, unfortunately, like, I feel like it's not that we glorify depression, but we like, we, we, we've made it so big that, that you use that word. And first of all, it commands a lot of like attention, right? Yes. Also it's, it, it almost, I feel like creates a victimhood. Now I know that there's clinical depression and I'm not talking about that. Okay? Right. And I, and I know that there are people that have serious issues out there. And obviously I support all of the, the help from the medical industry, but 
I feel like we are giving our children the wrong idea if, 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 if we don't help them have the tools to discern what thoughts, feelings, emotions, and states are right. so that they can clearly navigate and maybe have that perspective, Yes, take the emotion out of it, have a 30,000 foot view, mm -hmm. and then come to a process where they have a conclusion that is probably more based in reality and, and easier to handle with less overwhelm. So yeah, so that makes sense because okay. you know what, if you're not, you know, some people have an imbalance in the brain and they are chronically, you know, depressed and, you know, that might require medication. But for many people, we go into situations where it's overwhelming and we fall into depression because we are overwhelmed or we repressed our emotions. And then right. because we repressed our emotions, the emotions become, they build up in our system. And then you start to see, you feel the sadness, you feel the, the hopelessness, you feel, you start to feel depressed, but with the proper therapy and the proper help and, and expressing your emotions, finding the root cause of why you're feeling like this, right. you could actually pull yourself out of the depression and not have to rely on medication. You right. know, so there's a difference between having having a imbalance in the brain Correct. and being in situations or in an environment, which is causing you depression, but yeah, like you situational depression. I like that. Yes. I just wrote that down. I feel like we just created a new phrase. <laughs> I'll be written today. So, <laughs> no, but it's true. A hundred percent true. And, and oftentimes that overwhelm and I, you know, here's the thing that, 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 I did for many, many years, and it's a terror. It's it's a really hard thing to break the cycle, but it's a ruminating, right? So you can literally ruminate on something, meaning live it over and over and over in your head, right? That right. happened ten years ago. It's in the past. It's gone. It's, it's gone. It, there's nothing you can do about it, but come to terms with it, accept it, forgive yourself or whoever you know, and go oh, through good. that process. Right. But yes. never not going to be there. However, when you're thinking about it over and over and over again, your mind, your body does not know that it's not still happening. Yes. So essentially you're keeping it alive and living from that place, even though it's long gone. hundred percent. What that does is completely stunt your mobility. It completely stunts your your movement, your ability health. to your health, um, your ability to think clearly, your ability to be in the moment, to yes. problem solve, all of those things. And it's false. It's mm -hmm. a false reality created by a repetitive negative thought. Exactly. And how crazy is that? I literally, my life was run by that for 20 years. I'm not kidding. And it was Every single, no matter what I did, because I didn't change the thought pattern, no matter what I did, I, uh, hey, I moved. I'm like, oh, okay, it's not working out here. I'm going to relocate to Chicago. Sorry. Same thing happened. Right. Okay, that happened. I guess I'll move back to California, but I'll move to San Diego. You know, I'll move somewhere else. Right. Same, attracted the same relationship, the same result. The same, everything happened again, 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 again. Okay. So when are you going to get off of that roller coaster ride? And then, so then what that did to me or for me or whatever is create this victimhood mentality. Nothing yeah. ever works for me. Right. Life is so hard for me. Why, why do they have, why, why did this person get that when I'm so much, you know, all of those, why, like, why me, poor me blah, blah, blah. So now I'm compounding it. Guess what? I might as well. And I did to so put pour cement on your feet where you're at and let it harden. Yes. You know, we get fixated into a certain thought pattern and we it become, we, we've fixated ourselves so much that it's become a normal behavior. And so many people are unaware of how to, sometimes they don't even realize they're doing it. And that oh, is you're on negative. autopilot. You're and on we, autopilot. Yeah, sure. it's a, it's on autopilot. And you know, what happens is, is that people don't realize that the past is the past. We cannot change the past. We have to focus on the present. 
And we have to focus on now, the moment where we're in now. And then we can make changes. We can create short-term goals, long-term goals, you know, and then focus on, you know, clearing the negativ negativity in our lives and moving forward into a healthier, you know, into a healthier lifestyle. Because if you don't, you're, you're never going to, you know, progress in your life. You're never going to be happy. You're never going to make it to where you want to be in life. Right. Those dreams and, and desires. Gonna... Right. And you're always going to be, you know, affected by what people say or what yeah. doesn't happen or what does. Low self-esteem. Yeah. And here's the deal. What other people think is none of your business. It's exactly. not it doesn't matter. It doesn't. And I know. And see, so here is the problem when you're talking to teenagers is that everything matters, right? It yes. all matters, right? And, I, and, I, and so here's what I like to teach is delayed gratification. So it may seem important right now, but you need to really phrase it as this is important right now. Will this be important a year from now? Right. Will this, like you have to start questioning your feelings. You have to start probing and shining a flashlight in the shadows of what's lurking in the right to call it out. Yeah. If you when you when you shine a light on it, right, the the there is no monster under the bed. No. Right? We're we've created the fear in our minds of what we think it's going to be or yes. what they're going to say when that's not even remotely the truth or reality. Yeah. So it's about really understanding who you are what lights you up what we're all different we're all here for a reason oh definitely a hundred percent you have an assignment here and it's yes. up to you to find out who you are as you grow as you learn as you you know evolve yes. to the teenager and really figure out what is it that lights you up when you know what you stand for what yes. your why is Okay. That's first and foremost. Then you can go out into the world. And when you have control and you have developed the muscle of really being in control of your mind and your, and your emotions, yes. you create healthy boundaries for yourself. Right. Being now you're eliminating negative people because they don't jive with you. You're so centered in who you are that you're attracting the right people yes and you're bringing in the positive people like-minded people and opportunity will show up if and, you, and it's up to you to be prepared yes right so you move into goal setting which is you know what is your big picture goal mm -hmm. and then you now need to take that down into manageable bite-sized pieces month by month week by week, day by day, taking like intentional action. Right. And that is the formula for a healthy, complete, awesome life on purpose. Yeah. Because, you know, it all boils, boils down to when we, when kids worry and teens worry about what others think, it all boils down to their self-confidence level, how they feel about themselves. And right. sometimes, you know, it's the environment they grow up in. Sometimes you have emotionally abusive parents that put you down and put you down and put you down. And then you grow up with such a low self-esteem because you start to believe it. If enough right. of people tell you that you're this, you're going to start to believe it. Right. And then you, but you know, you have to, at some point you have to right. realize you have to find, you have, you know, that's when the therapy is good too. And you have to be able to find out who you really are, what your passion is. And you have to start figuring out, you have to start, you know, loving yourself, you know, the key, I think, you know, being able to love yourself, accept yourself for who you are and being able to, you know, not let others around you, you know, influence you or affect you. Because once you feel good about yourself, you don't care anymore what other people think. No, You've grown a thick skin and you do not care. It, and, and I would say also, you know, in abusive relationships or any circumstance where there are negative people, question what they're saying about you with yourself. Mm -hmm. Question it. 
I, I had a lot of emotional abuse and a lot of abandonment and, and not much positive um, parental reinforcement. Guidance. Right. So I didn't even have the guidance like I at all. I yeah. was raised myself. So that was a lot of what I had to overcome and catch up with. Right. Later on in my life, just to get to like center and where I should have started. But in any case, question that though, just because somebody says something to you, even if it's somebody like your mother or father or somebody that's high, you know, in revere you. your life or in society, question it. Don't take other people's, because listen, half the time, the things that come out of other people's mouths that are directed at you have nothing to do with you. It is their it own with them. stuff mm -hmm. and their own things. Issues. Oftentimes when you, when somebody has unresolved issues and they meet another person that mirrors that back to them, or they see that, oh, this is how. I sh it, it will trigger something in somebody else. Yes. Right? So never allow yourself to have somebody else's words, value, opinion, define who you are because right. you're the only one who can define that. And regardless, not everybody's going to love us all the time. No, well, I'm not for everyone. And no. that's okay. Listen, you may be, um, you may be a Toyota girl and I'm, you know, a Ford. It, that's right. okay. It's okay. And not everybody has to like me and, and I don't have to jive with everyone. Right. I know who my people are, but in any case, I'm just saying, question it. Is that true? Is it really true what they said about me? Am I a loser? Well, I get straight A's. I'm on the varsity tennis team. I volunteer at my church. Um, no, I'm not a loser. That is false. That person needs to go. Yeah. Like, what they have to say doesn't register because it is not true. Question that. Be the be the captain of your own ship. Like you need to be your own cheerleader you need yeah. to be your own protector you need to be your own provider nobody as you get older no one else is going to do that for you i say this to my clients all the time who's promoting you who's the mm -hmm. best person to promote you you are right exactly because you know you so learn to know yourself and be comfortable and confident in that and see the beauty in your individual gifts and you know, question things that people say. Don't necessarily go there. Don't give them the power over you yeah. to affect what goes on here and what goes on here. Right. You are in charge of that. Nobody else. Doesn't matter. No one else is in charge of that but you. And I think I, for myself, like when I was a teen and I was suffering from low confidence and self-esteem. And I was more of a follower than a leader at that time. Okay. I think one of the things that I did, well, I know what I did. I I got rid of all the negative people in my life. I said, okay, who are, who are people in my life that are a negative influence in my life? Who's pulling me down? And I let go of those people out of my life. You know, I just, just pulled away from them. And I focused on people who were positive, people who were a good influence, people who had good goals in their lives as a teen. And my life got better and my goals got higher and I felt better about myself. And I yeah. think, how do you feel about that? Um, it's so funny that you say that. I mean, I literally, I've been saying this to my son since he was like six years old. You are who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Be very, very discerning about who you allow to be in your inner circle because you are who you become, who you surround yourself with. You become that. So yeah. yes, yes, a hundred percent. I'm I'm really impressed. How old were you when you how did you come? Most kids on their own at this age wouldn't come to that conclusion. I, I struggled over. with low self-esteem probably for many years through my teenhood through 13 going all the way probably into 
18, I guess high school years, probably, no, no, about 16 years old, 17 years old, I realized that, you know what, I don't like the life I'm leading. I don't think it's healthy for me. I deserve better for myself. So then I pulled away from a lot of people that I were hanging out with, nice people, but they were not good people for me. And I just, you know, slowly just pulled away from them. I found better friends, better goals. You know, they were goal oriented, high achievers. I started hanging around them. And by the time I got into college, I said, all right, I know exactly what I want for myself. And at that point, I had built a self-esteem for myself. So it was a two year span of staying away from the people who brought me down and being with people who were high achievers, who had felt good about themselves. And when I say high achievers, I mean people who felt good about themselves, knew what they wanted in life and set goals and they were going to achieve those goals, you know. And yeah. by the time I got into college, I was like, I knew exactly what I wanted for myself. I And I felt good about myself and I was going to do everything I possibly could to try to achieve the goals I set for myself. I love that. I love that story. I really do. And um, that's incredible. Yeah. And and I think, and, and that was sort of the philosophy behind the book. It's a, you know, a step-by-step way to get to the point that you did on your own. Um, yeah. So, you know, each chapter sort of builds on that. Um, but, you know, you have to have a good understanding, like, you know, what's the big deal with integrity? Well, you had integrity. And I don't think that kids, the concept of integrity is not really fully talked about. And what No, that, it's not. And what's personal integrity? Because I think when We talk about integrity, especially, you know, in our society, everybody has integrity with their job, right? They have time. They have, they, 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 they have said to their, to themselves, well, I have to be an integrity here, here, and here. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to being an integrity person with yourself, that's where it changes, right? So the integrity of being in a relationship where you're not being treated well. Okay, you're out of integrity with yourself if you're allowing somebody to do that, right? Right. Or not speaking your voice, not speaking your mind, shoving that down. You're out of integrity. Um, I smoked for many years. And so one of the things that I would do is I would say to myself, I'm quitting smoking tomorrow. That's it. I'm not, that's it. I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm I'm gonna do it. This was on a Sunday night, mm-hmm. right? By Monday afternoon, guess what I was doing? I was smoking. You know why? Because I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone so that I allowed myself to be, to get out of it. Right. And continue to be out of integrity. So I would, even by stating that I was going to do it, I was already out of integrity because I wasn't serious. If I was serious, I would have made a declaration. I would have told someone about it. Right. And I would have made it right. But I didn't. So I was out of integrity. So there are m- multiple times, and and I think it's important for us to focus on personal integrity. And so there's a lot that I have um, in here about that, and and sort of exercises to highlight how to look at that and what that looks like. So I was going to ask. It's you. very easy to get back into integrity, and I know I work with a lot of people who then get paralyzed because they're out of integrity. Don't do that. Okay, ready? It's the easiest thing. Acknowledge that you're out of integrity. Mm-hmm. Recommit to what you're going to do. Right. By what date? And guess what? Now you're back in integrity. I acknowledge that I did not complete the assignment that I was supposed to by the date that I was supposed to, and that I'm out of integrity. I am now declaring that I am going to finish that assignment by Sunday, 5 p.m. um, And now I'm in integrity. It's that simple. Now, did you, do you like to keep a journal? Like, how, how do you, like, when you have these thoughts that come into your head, okay, I need to do this for myself. I need to do that for myself. Do yeah. you create a journal for yourself? Do you set goals on paper and then yes. try to achieve them? Yes, I do. So I have, um, I actually, and I can share it with your, with your viewers. Um, I have a Monday, Friday goal setting um, sheet. So Friday is results, Monday is goal setting, um, and you do it every Sunday night. And it's very, very specific. 
Um, I could probably, if you allow me to share my screen, I can. Yeah, go ahead. Show it to you. So here's this deck. This is declaration of Monday sheet. Okay. So um, your name and I like to have people to work with an accountability buddy. Um, I found that if you're working with somebody, it's a lot um, easier to stay in integrity um, and to follow through with what you say you're going to do if you have an accountability partner. So that's why that's up top. Um, and then um, I always love to start with celebration. Mm -hmm. Got to celebrate the wins. Um, and so you do professional and personal celebration. Um, and then this is monthly goals. So professional and personal, and then what you declare you're going to have done by a certain time and date. Um, and then who you have to be in order to complete that. What does your way of being have to be? Right. Okay. And then the actions that you're going to take, um, what won't get in your way and what, what may get in your way so that you're aware of those things. Um, right and plan for them um so they don't become an obstacle and then friday is results friday it's a similar um type of form um although it it's basically you're checking in and saying how much of a percentage you're done with that mm -hmm. and that you're going you're committed to finishing what you did not by sunday okay i like this this is very good yeah there we go, yeah. There we go. <laughs> so I was taking notes. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, and it, and it, it really is, it's really for, to, to really be successful at attaining and listen, life's going to throw obstacles at you. Yes, it Everything is. is a straight line. The other thing I wanted to say is, you know, I think that failure gets a bad rap. Right. But you know, I don't, I think if you try, you don't fail. I, I, I well, and, or, well, you have to, I mean, listen, there's no winning without losing. There's no success without failure. It's yin and yang. Our whole life universe is based on this principle, good, bad, happy, right. sad, right? So yeah. one isn't worse than the other. They're, they're, they're inverted versions of themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So reframe how you look at failure, reframe how you feel about trying something new and not doing it well. So right. listen, you tried, you know, that's a pat on the back. To learn. Do you know how many times did Thomas Edison fail before? Like, could you imagine any quit? We wouldn't have electricity. Exactly. Like, let's reframe failure and embrace it. Yes. Welcome it. Woo, I failed. <laughs> Hey, guess what? That means I'm one step closer to figuring it out. Right. I'm one step closer. Oh, I, okay. I suck at this. Great. You, then that's not for you. Then you're one step closer knowing, you know, listen, sometimes knowing what you're not good at, what you don't like is going to help you faster to figure out what you do. Exactly. Like exactly. use it all and stop putting definitions, good, bad, and bear, whatever it is. No, it's an experience and how you frame it, what you get out of it and how you allow it to mold and motivate you is how you're going to go through life. It's exactly. Crazy. And it's, it's going to be the difference between, you know, being in the flow of things and constantly fighting against it. Right. Exactly. Believe and even, you know, t Tony yeah. Robbins talks about like the first time he did a speaking event, he, he rented out a room, I think for a thousand people yep. and like 15 yep. people showed up, yep. you know, something around right. that number. And he yep. didn't give up, you know, he kept, he kept plugging it. He and gave plugging the it. best presentation to those 15 people. And that's that exactly he what he said. Mm -hmm. That's right. I know that because I've done his programs and I know, I, but yeah, but, but that's the point. And guess what? You reached one of those 15 people and you may have changed their life. Exactly. So really? Was that a failure? No. 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 It was actually a massive, massive win because he then realized who he was and what he was made of. Exactly. 100%. Anyway. Right? Yes. Amen. <laughs> yes, Tony. So, woo! Woo!
embrace it. it life is not going to be perfect Get no it. like stop with the expectations that's the other exactly thing. exactly you stop like projecting expectations or you're projecting like allowing other people to project theirs onto you right i mean i i'm not going to mention my age but it, it never goes away i i just recently was home for a funeral um uh, visiting my father and you know it, it's I might as well be like 12 years old when I talk to him and, and the way, and, and he still has expectations of me. And I, yeah. and I still walk away going, how the heck do, can he not know who I am at this point? Like, I, <laughs> like, it's like no, but it's okay. And that would have used to in the past spin me out and I would then turn into a ball of self-pity and victimization and then go back to like age four and pull out a lot of that stuff and snap yeah. it all over me. And, you know, now it's like, hey, love yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So you do you and I'm moving on. I'm exactly. out. Exactly. And it feels amazing. It feels amazing. Yeah. I, and I'm not pretending. I, I, I have not. It feels amazing. And hey, you're if you're not for me and I'm not for you, that's okay. It's Move okay. On down the road. Yeah. Find your people. Because I will not, I mean, I literally, I'm not a girl that has a massive amount of like friends because I've moved around a lot to avoid right. myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then wherever you go, there you are. So that didn't work. Um, but if you can count like your good friends on one hand. That's all you need. I mean it. And they're That's all you need. Loving people versus a hundred of this, this like static. Exactly. You are the wealthiest person on the face of this planet. Period. hundred percent. One hundred percent. And that doesn't have to be your family. We cannot choose our families. But and we teens, you know, choose. think, you know, they get worried that they're not popular, this and that, you know, but you know what? You don't have to be. You just no. have to feel good about you. And, you know, it, right. a lot of times you see the most successful people are the ones that were the quiet ones in school that, you know, maybe had one or two friends, you know, 100%. and those are the people who excelled because they knew who they were. Maybe they didn't, they weren't, you know, they weren't with all those kids, but they knew who they, they were. And then they went after it after, after they left school. And, and that's created their own sense of popularity within, yeah, their, within their rather than letting like the school and the social aspect define it for yes. them. Mm -hmm. Do not let other people define you define yourself well, most of those people are fake if you know they're, in high school because they're trying oh. to follow people because they have low self-esteem correct and here we go and that's exacerbated by social media it, exactly and all of these selfies in front of like ferraris listen it's not real it's not real Stop coming from a place where you think that that is real and that you're neat that you're jealous of that because it's not real and hey yes. even if it is i know you hear it all the time you can have all why do you think the majority of people who win the lottery end up broke in five years you can have all of the money in the world if you do not know and love and know yourself and if you are not okay with that and that alone and you will never be happy else, you will net no amount of money on this earth, no amount of cars, no amount of Gucci, no amount of sexy pictures on your Instagram posts is going to change that. Right. Nothing. Exactly. So start create, create, you know, this is build your house on a solid foundation. Yes. Build your house on a solid foundation and everything else will come. And let's tell those parents that if you see your child upset, they have low self-esteem, they're not feeling good about themselves, don't run to the doctor and get them a pill. Have talk. them talk to somebody. Have them try to talk to you. If they're not comfortable opening up because you're the parent, then find someone for them to talk to and let them get the proper therapy, the proper coaching so they can find out who they are, get to the root of the cause of what's bothering them, and then get out of it and excel and move forward in life. A hundred percent. Communication is key. It, it the is. The more that we communicate and the more that we 
continue to dig and continue to ask those questions and not take it all at base, but just keep going, keep going. There's more there to find. Yes. Uh, communication is everything. And, and if anybody is having, you know, issues with their, with their child or they need support, you know, please feel free to reach out to me on, through my website. Um, I am very, very much uh, hands-on and, and, and do get involved when I can, um, even if it's for advice. So I'm here to help um, and, and, you know, and, and reach out to people like, you know, find some, a friend, parents, find a friend that, that you can rely on, find, go to get, get a counselor at school, you know, find the resources, buy some books, you know, buy, buy some books. If it's not mine, find another one that resonates with you, but continue to have the conversations, continue to educate yourself and your kids. And, 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 um, and I, I, I believe that we can, turn this around. I think we can turn it around for them. Oh, 100%. Now tell everybody your website so they know oh. where to find you. Oh, right. Okay. It's www.ava-montgomery, M-O-N-T-G-O-M-E-R-Y.com. Um, there's a place that you can email me directly that goes directly to my inbox. And yes, I do respond to all of my emails. Um, or you can get Limitless Confidence for Teens on Amazon now. Um, there's a click through on the website, or you can go directly to Amazon if that's something that you want to do. That sounds great. And show everybody your book one more time so they see it. One more time. So Limited Confidence, can they find that on Amazon too now? Yeah, Limitless Confidence for Teens. It's on Amazon. Um, yeah, it's doing really well. And I'm super grateful. And I would just ask also, it's kind of like a little plea, if 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 you if you do buy the book and you love it and it and it works for you or you feel um that it was valuable, if you could leave a review. Um, as as you know, for authors, I was not aware of how big of a deal reviews are. <laughs> and how hard they are to get so anyway review other things too people not just my like review products review things for people i just i have a newfound respect for reviewing yeah <laughs> i'm like i didn't know i, I would have reviewed everybody's stuff <laughs> yeah that's so funny and congratulations yeah, it, on your book as well i love um, it thank you so stuff. much and uh, the the positivity and gratitude journal, it's amazing. Journaling is so important. If you can get your kids to get those thoughts and emotions out on paper, not always easy. Um, but I do also have a lot of exercises that prompt kids to do that and yeah. sort of turn it into a game um, to get them into the habit of really getting those thoughts out onto paper. It's real. It's It's very, very cathartic and a huge tool. I, I found it very beneficial. As I was a teen going all the way into my adulthood, I always journaled. And what I did was, is once I got to the point where I fit, felt like I, I have overcome that certain area of my life, I would take the pages out, rip them and rip it up. Because I would say, okay, yes, or I, I passed this. I'm, 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 I bettered myself. Like it's done. It's, it's done. It's over I with. Love it. And then yes. I would just throw it out and continue journaling. But now I'm at a new phase in my life, and the past is the past. And I was let go. It's it's a it's a physical way of letting things go. I do that a lot with. I have um, my clients write a letter to themselves, either their past self or their present self or or a family member or loved one that that they have unresolved issues with and we'll work through it and then we burn it yes that's an excellent way to do it too yeah same thing so i love that i love that yeah um anything that we can do to give people a different way of looking processing perspective um, I think that when you have a clearer perspective, you can come from a better place to make better decisions. From yes. A grounded and level-headed. 100%. Authentic way. Can people get your coaching if they're not in California? Can they also do it digitally? Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. I work with people all across the country. We can do Zoom meetings, um, telephone, if that works better for people who are not into the technical stuff of zoom um but yes and um i i, I welcome anyone across 
across the country or in in a different country if 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 they don't mind the time change. Okay, that sounds wonderful. So I'm going to put your uh, website www ava hashtag um, um, slash, slash I mean slash like slash Montgomery slash, mm-hmm. slash yeah Montgomery. And and then um and I also will put your book link so everyone knows where to get your book and it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Such you know. a pleasure speaking with you and I will get you um the I'll figure out how to get you the documents for the Monday Friday forms. So that can- sounds excellent. And then I'll put I'll make sure that we have, everybody knows about them also so you know people can benefit from them also. I would love that. Yeah, it really really does help. And if you are intentional about it and you do it every Sunday and you and you ask for somebody to hold you accountable, I promise you you will see the shift and change in your life very, very quickly. And you will start attaining the stuff that maybe you've been stuck, you know, behind for a while. And you know what, if you have parents that are supportive, this would be a great way for the parents to work with the child and also create a bond and also make sure that the the child improves. And at the same time, the mother or the father might learn a little about their child that they didn't know. And that could even strengthen the bond between them also. Oh, a hundred percent. And they could learn about themselves and make yeah. it fun, you know, make it a family thing, make it fun. And whoever achieves their goals this week earns points to go to Disney. I mean, I don't know, you know, yeah. we, we, especially boys. Yes. Boys, especially. They do. So if they know that they're working towards something that they really want, um, it's also a great way to teach that, that, um that to them as well it's yeah gratification work hard towards something and you can earn it so it's all compiled um together to create like a supercharged awesome habit yes yes it is yeah awesome well thank you so much for having oh, me you're so welcome it's been a pleasure like always i love having you on you have such valuable information and you taught people a lot about improving their self-confidence and also attaining, you know, the, the mastermind in the pot, you know, the, the power of positive thinking. And, you know, a lot of the topics we talked about, we, I know we were focused on teens, but a lot of these topics could also be focused on adults as well. Oh my gosh. Uh, I could literally just rewrite this book and take teens off of it. I mean, yeah. I, I have had parents go, oh my gosh, I wish I had this book when I was you know, you teenage. could use a lot of the stuff that you were talking about today. You know, adults could apply that to their own lives to help themselves improve their self-esteem as well. 100% and do it as a family. You do just it as a family. And learn and you're going to become closer because of it. And there's some fun exercises I try to turn them into. You know, I don't try. I turn them into games. And yeah, stuff. that's awesome. Fun. So we'll see. Yeah. So pick pick up a copy if you're interested. And, um, and you know, if anybody needs any added advice or direction towards somebody, you know, a professional, please feel free to reach out. I would love to speak with you. Thank you so much, Ava. It's been a pleasure having you on this show. And I look forward to maybe having you in the future on the show. We could talk a little bit further about, you know, we hit a lot about, you know, self-confidence and improving your self-confidence. Maybe we can go into more of the positive thinking aspect. So I would love that. I would love yeah. that anytime, anytime. And we'll get together maybe sometime and do an event. That would be awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much.